Let's talk about slides. They are uh, traditionally from the Kerry and Cork area of Ireland, uh, definitely associated with Schlieve Lucre playing. And they're uh, quite fast actually in terms of the BPM. So when you play a slide, it doesn't feel like you're playing very fast because there's a lot of space in the tune. But if you try and go from a slide into some other tune like a jig or something like that, you'll find out that the slide is actually played very, very quickly. Traditionally played for set dancers uh, the kind of eight person uh, or four person sets uh, that you would see in Irish Cayley dancing or Irish set dancing. Uh, so one of the best known ones is a tune called the Brosna Slide. So this is a simple slow version. <laughs> One of the important aspects of playing slides is that it's very much about the rhythm and so there's a very strong downbeat in slide playing. So there are plenty of opportunities for triplets and trebles, uh, particularly in this Brosna slide. And there's one, a tricky one in the second part, which I'll show you in a second, because it's a triplet that crosses up, up the way, up, up, up the strings. So here's the first part. So that high A is a lovely part of the tune because it really marks out the rhythm. So the tune, interestingly, is built around two sets of A notes which really mark out the rhythm. There's a double high A and then there's a double open A. And if you leave both of those without putting ornamentation on them, that's one way to really bring out the slide rhythm. Those A's really frame the tune. The, the top one you can come off it with a little bit of a triplet. But the framing of the tune benefits from leaving the open A as just two long notes. Here is the second part. We've got a G natural, a G natural in this, which gives it that modal flavour.
So it's not in true A minor because there is a C sharp in it. So it's, uh, I know there's a proper term for it, but it's, about, it's A modal or A mixolydian or one of those. So that second half is, is curious because it has a, a G natural instead of a G sharp, which would be A major. But it has the C sharp, which uh, would be a C natural if it was A minor. So the mix of the two is, is quite nice. And here is the tricky little triplet, which is going from the D up to the G. So on the right hand, you're, 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 the triplet will be down, up, down. So there's a double D, followed by a down, up, down. And that down, up, down is crossing from the A string to the E string in it, and your, your, your pick hand is moving down the way. So it's a little bit tricky. There is some pick work involved in getting that accurately. It's pretty easy when it's slow, obviously. We'll do that speed. And so there's a little bit of digging in that's needed on the right hand just to really carry off that triplet. So there are loads of opportunities, particularly in the first half, for chords, for big A chords. And D chords. So it's pretty straightforward in terms of the chords of A, A, D, and there's one E possible at the end. So for what it's worth, I have my G string tuned up to A all of the time. And particularly for tunes like this, it gives a nice uh, open tuning and allows for the chord to hit the full four strings. What I'm doing there is the first chord is just the open A and the open E. The second chord is the chord of D, so I'm using an F sharp on the D string and a high D on the A string. And then I'm just moving that shape essentially down, so I have a C sharp and an E, and that makes that second A chord. So that's a pretty nice sequence of chords. I'll play it at speed just so that you can uh, see it done at a little bit at a faster pace. The same is true in the second part. There's plenty of room for chords, but it stays mostly on that A. It 
really goes between an A and a G. So what you would do in the second part in terms of chords then is to really create that um, bass note, that the metronomic note happening with the open A. So it's a really nice tune to add chords to. It adds a lot of rhythm and a lot of uh, harmonic interest. So I'm going to play a version of this Brosna slide. And this time I'm going to concentrate on putting in lots of ornamentation. So it, it can make the tune kind of busy and take it away perhaps a little bit from that nice swingy slide rhythm for which slides are known. But in terms of uh, it being fun to play, uh, then this might be an option as well. So there's loads of little triplets, a couple of uh, slides and little pull-offs, uh, plenty to give flavour and texture and uh, just a, a, a definitely a sense of busyness to the tune, but it makes it a lot of fun to play as well. So that is the Brosna slide, simple, adding in chords, focusing on the rhythm, and then lots of options for triplets, trebles, and ornamentation. Head over to my Patreon page if you'd like to learn this tune. I have it fully notated in its simple format with chords, with ornamentation, with all the bells and whistles. It's Enda Scahal Banjo. The, I, I use the Sound Slice platform so you can learn uh, orally by looping bars. It's got a staff notation, a tab notation, and you can turn on the note names if you're an ABC learner. It's all in there. So that's patreon.com forward slash Enda Scahal Banjo, and I hope that you enjoy this tune, the Brosna Slide.